Well, rational functions have or can have an important property. And let's just state the property sort of the independent of rational functions. There are some, I even go so far as to say many, real world situations. Where increasing X should cause Y to eventually approach some number. And we can give two kind of very quick and dirty examples of this. Example, let's let X be the time since a drug was administered and why be the concentration of the drug in the patient's body. Yeah. Well, a realistic A um, graph for this might look something like this. And here is y equals zero, a concentration of zero. The drug has been completely flushed out of the patient's bloodstream. And we see X does some stuff around here. It goes up for a while. But ultimately, as time passes, the concentration in the body ought to approach zero. And the way this happens graphically, well, just like what we see here, we have y equals zero, and then we have our curve, and as x increases, y is getting closer and closer to the um, to zero, and the curve is getting closer and closer to this horizontal line. As a second example, you could look at the market saturation. So you could let X be the number of years since some technology was introduced, successfully introduced, let's say. And we can let Y be the percent of the population that owns this technology. 
So there are some thresholds that Y isn't going to go above. And if we look at smartphones, at this point, the vast probably everyone in this room owns a smartphone. There are people who don't, people who can't afford it, people who Amish people or other people who for religious or other reasons don't want a smartphone. But at this point, probably everybody who wants a smartphone and can afford a smartphone pretty much has one. So the number of people who own this new technology is more or less just sitting still at some market saturation level. It's not really increasing, not really decreasing. It's just sort of approached some number and then sits there. And again, what we're seeing graphically is that in this situation, the curve is approaching some horizontal line. Well, this might be a property that a lot of functions, a lot of real world functions have, but it's not a property that linear functions have or quadratic functions have or polynomials have. So if you want to look at market saturation or you want to look at drug concentration, none of those types of functions can be the way to go. By contrast, rational functions can have this property. So because of that, rational functions show up in a wide variety of situations. I mean, anything from medicine to business, any situation where you want a quantity to just approach some number as your X variable increases, is a good candidate to be studied or modeled using rational functions. These horizontal lines I've been drawing are called horizontal asymptotes. So a word you've seen before. So when you have this graphical situation where you've got a horizontal line and the curve does whatever it does, but eventually it starts approaching that horizontal line. That is a horizontal asymptote. And I've said that rational functions can have horizontal asymptotes. There, here is a rational function. It's a second degree polynomial divided by another second degree polynomial. I'm claiming it has a horizontal asymptote of two thirds. Never mind just now where that number comes from. But we see this line is coming down. 
and it is approaching this horizontal line until eventually they're basically visually indistinguishable. And our goal for today is maybe what you'd expect to find horizontal asymptotes. And I wouldn't call the math behind this difficult, but it does break into cases. So there are different cases that we have to look at. Let's remind ourselves, first of all, what a rational function is. It's one polynomial divided by another polynomial. Case one. So when I introduced this, I made a remark way back here. I used the word can. Rational functions can have horizontal asymptotes. And I used that word advising. So Case one is the boring case. Case one is the case where there aren't any horizontal asymptotes. And this happens when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And I said it out loud, but let's write it down as well. In this case, there is no horizontal asymptote. We can illustrate this. Let's go back to Desmos. My claim is that, you know, this is second degree. This is second degree. My claim is that if I change this to third degree, the horizontal asymptote will disappear. Because if this is third degree, then the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom. I press the three button. And just like we predicted, the horizontal asymptote vanishes. As X is increasing, Y is not approaching any number. Rather, as X is increasing, Y is also increasing. So no horizontal asymptote here. I said three cases. Um, before I continue, does anybody have any questions, either just conceptually or about this case specifically? Then case two is kind of the opposite of case one. In case two, the degree of the numerator 
is less than the degree of the denominator. So I flip this inequality around. Well, in case two, there is a horizontal asymptote, but in this case, the horizontal asymptote is always the same. It's at y equals zero. So if we went back to Desmos and let's take this two and make it bigger than three. Our claim is that, what did I do? Hey, go back. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, my claim is that if I make the degree down here bigger than the degree in the top, that zero is going to be a horizontal asymptote. Um, five. And there we go. We do indeed see it. This curve go down and start to crawl along this horizontal line at y equals zero. And zero will always be a horizontal asymptote as long as the degree up here is less than the degree down there. So like if I decided to turn this 4x into a 4x squared. Well, I changed the polynomial and I changed the graph, but this degree is still less than this degree. So zero is still our horizontal asymptote. If I turn this three into a four, well, this degree is still less than this degree. So zero is still a horizontal asymptote. So this is a very robust case. And case one is robust too in the sense that in both these cases, the details of the polynomials don't matter. The only thing that matters is the degrees. And you might be able to intuit the third case, We've looked at when the degree is bigger in the top. We've looked at when the degree is smaller in the top. All that remains is to look at the degree as being equal. Well, in this case, a horizontal asymptote does exist always. But this case is sort of, I won't say it's a lot of work, but the horizontal asymptote could be any number here. It could be two or five or negative 1.17. So you do have to find the horizontal asymptote if you're in this case. 
and to find the horizontal asymptote, in spite of the name, this is completely different from vertical asymptotes. You look at the leading terms of the top and the bottom of the rational function. This is something that might not make sense immediately. But just requires an example, I think, to verify things. So this is in this case. The degree of the top is two, the degree of the bottom is two. So the degrees are the same. Uh, we remember, hopefully, what the leading term is. We see the degree, it's two here, and we grab the x to that power, and we grab the number in front of it. So our leading terms are 2x squared and 3x squared. And I've said that we should um that we should take the leading terms and divide them. But what happens if you do this division is that the x terms cancel. x squared divided by x squared just goes away. And you are left with only a number. And the number you are left with is going to be the horizontal asymptote. Or so I think. Let's see if we can make this work by in this, I mean, graphically. Let's see if this two thirds really is the horizontal asymptote. So two x squared minus eleven x plus seven and down here. Uh, 3x squared plus x minus 1. And my claim is that two thirds ought to be a horizontal asymptote. And I just scroll to the right. And we do indeed see as X is getting bigger and bigger, this function is crawling along this horizontal line. And I mean, as X gets big, Y is supposed to be approaching two-thirds, 0.666 repeated, and we see as, as um, x gets big, maybe I'll 
do that. So 0 0.62, 0 0.64, 0 0.649, 0 0.652, that X be even bigger. 0 0.659, 0 0.661, 0 0.663, that X be even bigger. 0.664, So as X increases, Y is indeed approaching this number, 0.66 repeating. If we went all out, maybe X can go up to 10,000. Then we start to see 0.666. So this is a horizontal asymptote. And that's all there really is. I mean, the trouble students have with this material isn't in general performing mathematical operations. The trouble students have is that they're asked for a horizontal asymptote, then they find vertical asymptotes instead. Or they're asked for roots, and they give a horizontal asymptote. It's just taking this material and kind of getting these various techniques mixed up. So if you can avoid doing that, then as far as this material goes, you should be fine. But practice is always necessary. 